Hello everybody, this is Mr. Navarrete, and today I'll be going over the gas density and molar mass homework. So, let's get started. For question one, it asks, find the density of HCl gas at standard temperature and pressure to three significant figures. So, I'm going to use my ideal gas law, and that tells me my pressure times my volume is equal to the number of moles times my R times temperature. But, and the number of moles that can be rewritten as my mass over my molecular weight. Now, with some rearrangement, I can get pressure times my molecular weight divided by R times my temperature is equal to mass over volume. And mass over volume is our density. With that, I can rewrite all of my ideal gas law to say density is equal to pressure times molecular weight divided by R times temperature. Plugging everything in, at standard temperature and pressure, I'm gonna have 1.00 atmospheres. My molecular weight for HCl is 36.46. My R that I chose was 0.0821 because we're in atmospheres. And at STP, my temperature is gonna be 273 Kelvin. Plugging all of that into my calculator, I get a density of 1.63 grams per liter. For question two, it asks, find the density of HCl gas at 127 degrees Celsius and 0 0.500 atmospheres to three significant figures. We're gonna use the same equation that we used for problem one. Density is equal to my pressure times my molecular weight divided by my R times temperature. Before we plug anything in, my temperature is in Celsius. I need to make sure that it's in Kelvin. So now with that in mind, plugging all of my, my correct values in, I get 0 0.500 atmospheres times 36.46 grams per mole divided by 0 0.0821 times 400 Kelvin. Plugging all of that into my calculator, I get a density of 0 0.555 grams per liter. For three, it asks, the mass of 1.00 liters of a certain gas at standard temperature and pressure is 2.75 grams. Calculate the molecular weight and molar mass of this gas. Where do we start? Well, we're given our mass and a volume, we can find our density. Density is mass over volume. So plugging in what we have, we can get our mass of 2.75 grams divided by 1.00 liters, and that gives us a density of 2.75 grams per liter. However, we also know that density is equal to my pressure times my molecular weight divided by R times our temperature. We can plug in all of our values. We can plug in the density that we just found we're at standard temperature and pressure, so that's one atmosphere at 273 Kelvin. We know our R value, and now we just have to solve for our molecular weight. Isolating our molecular weight and plugging all of that into our calculator, we get a molecular weight of 61.6 grams per mole. For four, it asks, what is the density of uranium hexafluoride at standard temperature and pressure? So we're just gonna keep using the same equation. Density is equal to my pressure times molecular weight divided by my R times temperature. Well, my pressure is 1.00 atmospheres. This is my molecular mass of uranium hexafluoride. We can look up our R value for our pressure. And 273 Kelvin, that's our temperature at standard temperature and pressure. Plugging all that into our calculator, we get a density of 15.7 grams per liter. Five it asks, the density of an unknown gas is 0 0.556 grams per liter at 373 Kelvin and 1.00 atmosphere. What is the molar mass of the gas? So let's write down our equation. We can get density is equal to my pressure times molecular weight divided by R times temperature. Plugging in all of our values, we can then solve for our molecular weight. Isolating our molecular weight with some algebra, we can get the molecular weight by itself and plug all of that into our calculator to get a molecular weight of 
17.0 grams per mole. 6 says the density of a different unknown gas at 373 Kelvin and 1.00 atmospheres is 1.04 grams per liter. What's the molar mass of this gas? So same steps. First going to write down my equation. Density is equal to my pressure times molecular weight divided by my R times temperature. And just plug in everything that we know. Once we have this, we can isolate our molecular weight. We can then input all of this into our calculator to get 31.8 grams per mole. For 7, it says the density of a gas is found to be 0 0.441 grams per liter at 750 torr and 100 degrees Celsius. What is the molar mass of the gas? Very similar to our other ones. So first thing I'm going to do is write down my equation. Density is equal to pressure times my molecular weight divided by R times temperature. Few things to note, we are going to have a different R value because we're not in atmospheres anymore. We're in Tor. So we need to adjust for that. Also, we need to make sure that our temperature is in Kelvin, not Celsius. Plugging in our values, we can solve for our molecular weight. Only changes here is my temperature is in Kelvin and my R value is meant to represent my new pressure in Tor. Isolating my molecular weight and plugging all of that into my calculator, I get 13.7 grams per mole. For number eight, it says, try to identify the gases in questions five, six, and seven. So let's look at number five first. For that one, we got a molecular mass of 17.0 grams per mole. Now to me, looking at that mass, the first thing that comes to mind is ammonia, NH3, which would have a molar mass of 17. Next, let's look at number six. Six, we got a molar mass of 31.8 grams per mole. And that one is a little lower, but the first one that comes to mind for me is an oxygen gas molecule, which would give us a molar mass of 32. Now for seven, we got a molar mass of 13.7 grams per mole. And for me, the easiest one that comes to mind is CH2, which would give us a molar mass of about 14, which is pretty close enough to 13.7. For it says, you have data showing that a gas is 92.24% carbon and 7.76% hydrogen. If 632 milliliters of the gas at 750 torr and 27 degrees Celsius have a mass of 0 0.65 grams, what is the molecular formula of the gas? This is just like our stoichiometry problems that we've done in the past. So let's tackle it one step at a time. Just like our other problems, they give us percents, but they don't give us the actual amount that we have. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna change my percent into grams. Easiest thing to do, they tell us percent, I can assume 100 grams. And because of that, 92.24% of carbon becomes 92.24 grams of carbon. And with hydrogen, 7.76% becomes 7.76 grams of hydrogen. Cool, that was our first step. From there, we have to convert from grams to moles. So in order to do that for carbon, I need the molar mass of carbon. To convert 92.24 grams of carbon, well, I know that in one mole of carbon, there's 12.0 grams. So that's going to give me 7.69 moles. I can do the same thing for hydrogen, 7.76 grams of hydrogen. Well, in one mole, there's 1.01 .01 grams. And that's going to give me 7.68 moles of hydrogen. Now at this step, we have to create our ratios. So what we have to do is divide by our smallest number. Looking at them, they're pretty close. So it'll be one to one. But just in case, I'm going to divide my 7.69 moles by 7.68, which will give me one. And 7.68 divided by 7.68 is also going to give me one. So my empirical formula is going to be C1H1. How do I get my molecular formula? Well, I need to know my molecular weight. And in order to do that, I can use my molecular weight is equal to my mass 
times R times temperature divided by pressure times volume. And I can plug in all of the information that I was given with a few changes. I need to make sure that my temperature is in Kelvin and that my R value is the one for Tor. Plugging all of my stuff in, my mass is 0 0.65. This is my R value with Tor. 27 degrees Celsius becomes 300 Kelvin. And, oh, one last thing. My R value is for liters, but the problem gives me milliliters. So I need to convert 632 milliliters into liters. Plugging all of that into my calculator, I get 25.7 grams per mole. And that's my molar mass. Now let's compare the molar mass from my empirical formula to what we actually calculated. C1H1 was gonna have a molar mass of 13. I can divide 25.7 by 13 to see by what factor my empirical formula is off by. Doing that, I can get a number of about two, which tells me that I need to double my empirical formula to get my molecular formula. My molecular formula would just be C2H2. For my last one, it's a two-parter, and it says the mass of 1.00 liters of nitrogen gas at STP is 1.25 grams. For part A, it says use the data to calculate the molecular mass of nitrogen gas. So let's look at my equation. Molecular weight is equal to mass times R times temperature divided by pressure times volume. We are at STP. So I know my temperature is gonna be 273 Kelvin and my pressure is gonna be one atmosphere. And I can choose an R value accordingly. Plugging all of my values in, I can get a molecular weight of 28.0 grams per mole. Now for part B, it says from that calculated molecular mass and the given data, determine the number of atoms in a molecule of nitrogen. Now you can totally do this mentally and figure it out and then just double check with their calculations. So we calculated a molecular weight of 28.0 grams. We can convert that to moles by saying, well, one mole of nitrogen gas has 28.0 grams. We can then convert moles into molecules of nitrogen using Avogadro's number. And from molecules of N2, well, we know that in one molecule of nitrogen gas, there's two nitrogen atoms. Plugging all of that into our calculator, we can get that there are 1.20 times 10 to the 24 nitrogen atoms. And that's it. If you have any questions, don't forget to message myself or Mr. Morgan on Schoology. Other than that, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.